So we're going to um, test fit the Tucker manifold. We're going to send it up to the bottom, mount it in place, see what we got to cut, see what we got to trim, see what we got to adjust. And yeah, let's see. Think you're going to be able to do it? Yep. Mm. Uh, it's, hitting, it's, hitting, it's hitting against this with the other. Nope. Nope. That's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be a pain doing that. So let's try to get it from the top. Maybe. Might have to take the VTEX solenoid off. Yeah. I think we can we can probably slide it right in through here. Alright, so he's under here uh, draining the oil because we're going to have to drop the oil pan to put a bung on it for the return line. So, we're draining the oil now while we try to work with this manifold to fit it in. Jack it up so I can remove this. Oh, it's raining. Oh, it's a little black. Come on. It's black. Sheldon, what's Come up, on, man? Come on, Sheldon. It's too black. How you do, how you do the engine like this, man? You know what it is? It's because I barely, it's mostly parked. <laughs> Damn. So right now we're um, removing the VTEC solenoid since we couldn't fit the manifold in through the bottom. So we're going to just move this out the way so we could push it to the side and try to squeeze the manifold in through here. So what, how many bolts is there? Like three or three. four? Three, three 10 millimeter bolts. Yeah. And then the plug, but since we're not gonna remove it fully, we're gonna leave it plugged in. Yeah, it's off, that was easy. Just watch uh, you don't drop the gasket and lose it. It has a little rubber gasket around it. Yeah. Most of the time you don't have to worry about it, but okay. just to be safe. Okay, so we got the turbo manifold on. It's sitting pretty good. We removed the VTEC solenoid just to make sure that we were able to fit it properly without any obstructions. So this is how it's sitting right now. Looks pretty good. We also removed the screws for the fuse box but I think we could get away with putting it back where it belongs so yeah we actually can we'll just heat wrap some of the components that way to protect them from uh, heat soak so it looks pretty good actually I'm really impressed with it what do you think Shell? Yeah, pretty good yeah I like it the AC line is in place and AC will still work yeah AC compatible now we just got to decide what we're going to do about these dual waste gates um, one of them is getting cut off and capped not sure which one yet probably this one but we don't know we got to mount the turbo and see how the fitment is Wow Garrett. Wow, it already looks crazy. Now the downpipe most likely is gonna be sent through here down. Yo, this guy, yo, come on, man. And it's not like I'm heavy, I'm light. Oh, man. I saw it fall apart. I'm not the creeper. So right now they're under there uh, taking the pan off. They took I believe they took all the screws out for the pan, all the 10 millimeters. So you got two 12s all the way down there. So right now he's prying against the pan side by side because you don't want to bend the pan or scratch up the bottom of the motor. So you want to be gentle with pulling it apart. Little by little. Boom, mm, there goes the pan. 
What's going on guys? Welcome back today to the channel. Uh, for right now we're um, at the garage again. We're working on the S2000. We're going to continue boosting this thing. Uh, so Sheldon right now is removing the front timing plate, the timing cover, so we could get to the post plates to change them. Like uh, I think we showed you the last video. These are the post plates. Let me see if I can get the part number. This is the part number there. For one of them, this is the other one. So those are the post plates you need to run a K-Pro on a AP1 Honda S1000. Anything AP1, because you have to convert everything to AP2 just to run a K-Pro, which is insane. But you gotta do what you gotta do. So right now my uncle is, uh, he measured the size of the hole. Because we don't want to cut it. We were going to cut one of, one of them off at first. But we're not going to because it just makes no sense. What if we want to run it, like in the future, if we want to run the twin screw, we have it there already. So what he's going to do is weld a cap just to cap it off, to block it off. So this is actually what he's doing. He's gonna weld the cap to a uh, another flange, so we could just mount it on instead of welding the manifold itself. So we want we could just remove it and put another wastegate on. So right now we're getting the TIG welder set up for stainless. So we got the uh, what's his name again? Furic. Yeah, Furic. Got the Furic cup on. Jazzy ten. Jazzy ten Furic cup. So this is the intercooler we're using. This is all the piping we need. Uh, all the piping is just regular elbows and straight pieces. We're gonna do all the fab work. So we're cutting all the pies. We're cutting all the angles. We're doing everything custom. So we're about to start that pretty soon. Once we get the post plate changed, everything back together, the manifold done, uh, we're gonna start the process on that stuff right there. Time the covers off. Now we gotta take that down there apart and get to the post plates. This is the this is the post plate that we have to replace when you're doing the uh, Honda K Pro. So this is an AP2 post plate. It's going on the AP1 outside. That's what it says. Do not make an error with this installation and put it in like that. Outside has to point outside towards the bumper. Outside has to face the front end of the car. Also screw up. Oh shit. So that's the AP1 post plate. So outside. There we go. A little tricky. But just make sure it's outside. It's outside. We gotta take the valve cover off. Oh. So the second post plate is where again? It's uh on the exhaust cam. So on this cam, so you have to remove the valve cover. And it's by the firewall. On this side. Very difficult to get to. Um but we're working with a tight space. Um have to use like a short Allen wrench. I think it's uh I forgot what size it is, but it's a little difficult to get to. So we'll show you guys. We'll get to it though. Alright, so we ran into a little problem with this. Um, since the manifold is a T4 manifold, and we have a T3 turbo, we're running the adapter plate. But the only thing this adapter plate is, if you look close, you can see the turbo in the way of this bolt which mounts to the manifold. So these top bolts mount to the manifold, all the outer ones the manifold, and then these bottom bolts mount the turbo to the flange. So, this 
problem is running into right now, so we're trying to figure out what to do with that. All right, guys. So I set this uh, this tripod up for him, so he can show you guys. But you know, we went out to go get lunch, and this guy gets it's crazy with the weld and he doesn't even show you guys. All right, so uh, just getting the uh, manifold all prepped for back version. Yeah, everything's closed off. It's the little tank, it's the big tank. The line running all the way inside. So this is the cap welded together. We're gonna close the manifold. Look how clean this thing is, guys. This thing is original Honda bond from the dealer. This motor has never been opened up, taken apart, nothing. I haven't. We haven't even cleaned this off yet. This is. It coming straight off and that's it. Usually these things be filled with Honda Bond. But this is... That's all that's there. This is nice. Now look at the colors on those. Alright, so it's all welded up. Now we could uh... Put it back on the car and check the fitment of everything. So this is where the intercooler is going to sit. Uh, right now we're getting it mounted. Well, not mounted. We're going to start mounting it. So we're cutting the tabs. These are the tabs we're going to use. And sit like that. Onto this bar here, the crash bar. So right there, basically. But more, it's going to sit up like that. So this is how the intercooler looks mounted. Well, it's not mounted, it's just held up right now in place. We're getting it ready to weld it while the bracket's on. So there's one bracket, it's the second bracket. And it looks, looks great. Intercooler, intercooler is basically mounted now. Uh, any more welding you gotta do for that? Oh no, that's it, right? I hope you didn't crack my screen or nothing. Huh? Yeah, shut up. Yo, you that burnt my screen a little bit. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, bro. That's crazy. I you messed up. Sorry. It's gonna burnt my screen. Yo, you are savage. Uh, yo, I totally forgot, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> now we're cutting the uh, the plastic with a hole saw just to open it up. And the cooler's yo, on. Yo, yo. So right now we're going to start cutting some pies. You've seen from boosting this guy's S2000. We already got it marked. One side. That's the other side. Now this camera kind of sucks on the focusing, but uh, I'm gonna cut some pods real quick and I'll get back to you guys. All right, guys. Uh, so a little update: manifold is on, turbo which is mounted. We just uh, cocked it, so the turbo feed is up, and the return is facing down. Uh, now we still left this loose because we want this to have like some play, just so we know where to run the piping at, so that we won't have to go and adjust this twice. Bunch of pie cuts here, ready. Now it's time for some lunch. <laughs> what y'all think? <laughs> Alright guys, so we're gonna start off with a straight piece similar to this. A little shorter than this, just so you can get an idea. I'm gonna stuck that in there. It's gonna be like that. And uh two pies. Cause we want it to angle down. Cause if not, if we send it straight out. Like, all right, say if we use this elbow to send it straight down, it sticks up too high here and it's gonna hit the hood. So what we're trying to do is send it down a little earlier so we don't we won't have that problem. So we're gonna run a four inch piece here on two pies, two nine degree pies, which are right here. 
like that, and this 45 degree bend to send it straight down. Yeah, put it in place for me. So it's gonna look something similar to that. Somewhere like that. Alright, so while we did this, me and Jason did this. Uh, my uncle's been welding a V band to the back of the Gaia Turbo. Wow. I mean, it's a little dirty because of the cast, but. And come on now, you can't. Really shuffling. Alright, so Theo's gonna start off welding that. I got. About a quarter of an inch to um, take off of this, just so I could raise it up. This is gonna go through here, right through there, something like that. So right now it's sitting like low. So what I want to do is, that's why I'm gonna cut it up. I mean, that's why I'm gonna cut it a quarter of an inch more higher, so I could sit up and match the coupler. So we're gonna see something like that. All right, guys. So the top is done. Uh, we put a coupler here because to make that a one piece from there to the intercooler pipe is gonna be almost impossible to get it on and out. So we put one coupler there, and from that we got a 90 coming down, shooting this way. So where this is gonna be another 90 coming here, right there to the coupler. But I just have to measure a little bit more and trim this 90 that's coming down, the back 90 down here. Trim it back a little bit and probably trim this one back a little bit too to get it to fit in. As you see, if we mount it on now, it's not. Yeah. So I'm gonna do a couple of measurements and uh, cut this in to make this work. All right, so this is where we're gonna be putting the uh, drain plug. At, uh, it's on this, the timing cover. We chose here because it's out of the way of the downpipe. So the downpipe is going to be going through the back, down through there. So we don't want to put it on the, oil, the side of the oil pan because that's going to be a problem. Because we will usually put it like on, on my uncle's car, we put it in here. And um, we don't want to put it here because this is going to be in the way of the downpipe. So we don't want to be anywhere close to the downpipe. We could put it here, but it's going to be even more work because the way the pan is. So the best route. So the best route was on the timing cover since it's a flush, even surface, and it drops right back into the pan no matter what. And look at the dimes. 